Hello, gentlemen. Jeff Sanchez, Children's Right to Advocate, here again. <clears throat> this also comes from a brilliant sociologist named Estelle Villar, who females tried to kill back in the 70s. Women have no feelings. Women have a great many methods to manipulate men, but to list them all here is impossible. Suffice it to look more closely at two relatively harmless methods a man's good manners, and the suppression of his emotions. Any man who wishes to have success with women, and is there one who doesn't, must acquire a variety of qualifications apart from intelligence, industry, and pertinacity. He must know exactly how to behave in the presence of women. With this aim in view, women have established certain norms, which are called good manners. Basically, the rule is that any man who has a sense of self-respect must at all times treat a woman like a queen. <clears throat> Similarly, a self-respecting woman must at all times give men every opportunity to treat her like a queen. <laughs> women will marry a man simply because he is wealthy. But if she is given a choice between two wealthy men, one with manners and one without manners, she will choose the man who has them. For, if a man has mastered the rules governing good manners, a woman can be sure he will never at any time question her ideal value as a woman, which he has long been conditioned to respect. Not even after she has ceased to attract him. Psychologists state that happiness comes with laughter, faith with fear, faith with prayer, this is true, but only for men. If he treats woman as a superior being, she will become a superior being, being for him. Women are not gifted to differentiate between fact and fiction. Unlike other methods of manipulation, good manners are not the result of conditioned forms of behavior based on profound psychological motivation. Children are taught to behave relatively late, and manners are particularly easy to recognize as a form of women's manipulation. It is a puzzle why even today such old tricks are still successful. The most cynical aspect of the good manners etiquette is the role of protector, which is forced on man. This begins harmlessly enough, it is true. He follows her when going upstairs or walks on the traffic side when on the pavement. It is when we reach the level of military service in war that the significance of this becomes more serious. One of the most important rules is that men must, under all circumstances, protect a woman from any unpleasantness, even if necessary, with his life. And as soon as he is old enough to do that, he will do just this, just that. This training is accomplished at such an early age that in any catastrophe, a man will save a woman and children before he thinks of himself, at the cost of his own life. There is no compelling reasons, reason why these roles should not be reversed. Since woman is unfeeling, she could cope with the psychological effects of war atrocities more easily than a man. And the modern form of war requires neither physical strength nor intelligence, only the ability to survive, tenacity. All statistics about lifespan shows that women live longer than men, and are therefore tougher. A normally developed North American woman has taken, on, taken sports at school, for example, is certainly not inferior in physical strength to the much smaller Vietnamese man. A GA fighting against an Asian man is making war on an enemy no stronger than his college girlfriends. We have already mentioned women's lack of emotional capacity. The fact that women make every attempt to suppress man's ability to suppress his emotions is a certain indication of this. Yet, she still contrives to create a myth of feminine depth and feeling and vulnerability. The tear ducts are tiny pouches containing fluid. With training, they can be controlled, just as one controls the bladder. So there is no more need for an adult to cry than there is for him to wet his bed. A male child is taught very early in life to control both of these functions. Once again, woman degrades herself. 
Boys don't cry. You're not a little girl. Little girls, on the other hand, are never taught to control their tears and quickly learn to use them to their advantage. If a man sees a woman crying, it never occurs to him that she may be incontinent. He assumes that her feelings are aroused to a considerable extent and even judges the degree of feelings by the quality of liquid shed. This is oddly a mistake. Interpretation. Women really are callous creatures, mainly because it is to their disadvantage to feel deeply. Feelings might seduce them into choosing a man who is of no use to them, i.e., a man they could not manipulate at will. They might even actively come to dislike men. After all, men are beings who should be alien to them and decide to spend their lives exclusively in the company of women. In fact, however, there are far fewer overtly homosexual women than homosexual men, and such women are generally well-to-do or at least financially secure. A woman with feelings would have to think and work and to take on responsibilities and to learn to do without all the things which mean so much to her. Because she does not want to do this, she decides to remain callous, but she knows at the same time that it is necessary for a woman to enact the role of sensitive being or man would be become aware of her essentially cold and callous, calculating nature. Still, as her emotions are always faked and never felt, she can keep a clear head. You can take advantage of someone's feelings only if you are not involved yourself. Therefore, she turns her partner's emotions to her own profit, only taking care to make sure he believes she feels as deeply as he himself, perhaps even more deeply. She must make him believe she as a woman is much less stable, much more irrational, much more emotional. Only thus may her deception remain undetected. But manipulation, as in any case, already has taken care of that. A real man does not weep or laugh very loud. Reserved smiles have a sympathetic effect on those around him and make him seem a serious person. To his business associates, he never shows surprise. He never screams, ah, when the light goes on, nor ah, when he touches cold water. He never shows that he is making an effort by saying, oof, when he has lifted a heavy case. He does not even sing when he is happy. Therefore, if a man notices all these emotional reactions in women, it never occurs to him that he has been once again conditioned by women not to express his own similar feelings. As a result, he assumes she is much more sensitive than he is, for otherwise she would not dare to ex exhibit her feelings in such an uncontrolled manner. A man would cry only in a real catastrophe occurred, perhaps the death of his wife. Must assume that women his wife breaks into a flood of tears because of canceled up holiday plans, for example, her emotions are equally strong, but for lesser cause. He thinks himself lottish and callous because he cannot share her grief. What an advantage man would have if only he realized the cold, clear, calculating thoughts running through a woman's head while her eyes are brimming with tears. Take care.